welcome to the second part of our discussion and today our topic of discussion is the marine ecosystem and our guest in studio is Cynthia Mungai. Don't forget to communicate with us or also join our discussion by sending us a text message on the number displayed on the screen or through our Facebook fan page at Champions TV Kenya. So uh, Cynthia Mungai, uh, you are explaining to us about the human impacts to the marine ecosystem. Yeah, continue. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me again. Uh, we were talking pollution and we talked about the various ways through which marine ecosystems are polluted. Um, I want to talk about eutrophication now. This is the excessive, having excess minerals in the waters and this causes algal blooms. And the algal blooms affect the marine biodiversity actually. And pollution can also be through other methods like dumping of having plastics. I think all of you who have been on YouTube have seen that for ocean program that's aimed at removal of plastic, marine plastic pollution from the sea by in the next 10 years. It's an American program, but I think we can adopt it here too by empowering people or encouraging every other person to remove plastics from the ocean. This is aimed at protection of our ocean and yeah. Okay, actually uh, that idea of uh, marine pollution using the plastic is actually an emerging global issue. Okay, what about the issues of uh, mining? Uh, mining is actually also an economic activity along the coastline. Kenya to be specific, we have tire mine uh, mining in Diani Beach and this mining causes environmental hazards to the marine ecosystem and this affects the marine biodiversity in general. And to curb this I think we can reduce our mining or rather we reclaim our mined areas already. And you have talked about uh, the mangroves and I understand that you have told us that mangroves help in carbon sequestration. So is there an effect when we degrade mangroves to the marine ecosystem? When mangroves are degraded that means we don't have carbon sinks at all and we don't, when we don't have carbon sink that means the influx of our greenhouse gases in the atmosphere increases and when this increases the ocean absorbs a third of the ca carbon in the atmosphere and this carbon reacts with the water to form carbonic acid and this leads to ocean acidification. Mm, species like shellfish can actually not exist anymore when there is acidic ocean because uh, the acid in the ocean reacts with the shells of organisms like this and they end up dying. Mm -hmm. So we should reduce the ocean acidification which means reduction of carbon in the atmosphere which basically means regulation of global warming. Okay. So, okay. And uh, now that we have already observed uh, and discussed about the human impacts towards uh, the marine ecosystem. What are some of the possible solutions? Because I understand that you have told us that this mangrove and or rather the marine ecosystem has a lot of advantages to the generations, both the present and future. So what are some of the possible conservation efforts that can be done in order to ensure that indeed this marine ecosystem is used in a sustainable way? Uh, marine ecosystems can be restored by, for example, the mangrove ecosystem can be reforested. Uh, both reforestation and afforestation can take place. We should encourage our kids and the locals in general to plant more mangrove 
seedlings along the coastline and this will in turn help in mangrove growth and carbon sequestration and then climate change. It's actually a cycle. Uh, again, we can do the demarcation of the marine ecosystems. Here we can declare it as a protected area. By this I mean we reduce the activities that are taking place along the coastline and this will in turn uh, mean that our marine ecosystem will not be tampered with and this means it will, the biodiversity continues interacting as normally without mm -hmm. interruptions. Um, another way is that by involving our government we the legal framework in general, the policies and the laws that are there should be implemented. By this we mean implementing the laws that uh, are aimed at protecting the marine ecosystems. We should make sure that they are implemented, not just stated. And this will help in marine coast protection. And. Uh who are the best personalities or people that can be involved in conservation of the marine ecosystem? Conservation of any area in general is best done by locals mm -hmm. because locals know how to interact with that particular ecosystem. And by this, they'll guide us and show us what has been done before, what has been there before the degradation, they used to live there, they know how to coexist. Mm -hmm. So I think locals should be empowered to act as the first conservationists of these areas. Okay. And uh, when you're talking about local, it's, it's which category? Is it the women, the men, the youth, the kids? Which category can act towards the conservation of the mangrove from the experience of your interest? From the experience of my interest, I think it's an integrated thing. We, sh we should start from the kids. When you teach them conservation from the grassroots, I think it's taken back, or rather it's carried forward to when they grow up, the youth stage, and when they become parents and all that. It's, it's a cycle, it's passed from generation to generation. So I think it's an integrated thing and everyone should be encouraged to be a conservationist. Mm -hmm. So, and in Gazi Bay we have uh, the Mikoko Pamoja initiative because from our previous discussion you had told us that yes, mangroves are being restored and mangroves is part of the marine ecosystem. So can you talk about the Mikoko Pamoja initiative? Um, the Mikoko Pamoja initiative is actually a women-run program and it's aimed at um, conserving. It's actually a conservation group. Uh, the women just came together and decided they'll form a conservation group that's aimed at conserving the mangrove. I think this is in relation to an Indian program, which um, it was actually a clip that I saw on YouTube that women were being were the major ambassadors of conservation and they were doing replanting of mangroves. So I think by adopting such things we are aiming at conservation and restoration together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we also have the idea of the beach boys and the coral reefs. And these coral reefs are part of the marine ecosystem. So can you talk to us about the beach boys and the coral reefs? Uh, beach boys and coral reefs, the beach boys actually collect these corals that lie along the ocean coastline. Um, coral, what people don't know actually, the collection of corals is illegal. Mm -hmm. And the beach boys actually sell them to tourists. But now I... I think I am proud of our government for having the KWS there because they actually have enforced a legal way of dealing with such issues. They take away the 
corals from you and you actually have to pay a fine for taking away those corals mm -hmm. and they are taken back to the ocean so I think the government is dealing with so at least that is an uh, that is an, a conservation effort that is working yes okay so thank you so much Cynthia Mungai uh, we appreciate your discussion uh, towards the marine ecosystem and I want you to look at the camera and just tell uh, say a final word to the viewers about the marine ecosystem. The marine ecosystem is a complex biodiversity as I started by saying earlier and we should all aim at, at being conservationists not just of the marine ecosystem but of every other part of our environment in general because it is with this that we get services and we interact with it. So we should learn to live in coexistence and aim at sustainably using it. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for keeping it to Champions TV. Remember that this is Nature Talk and thanks so much for watching. Until next time, my name is Grace Achien.